I'm Dr. Simon Fry, the consultant in clinical neurophysiology. In this video, I'm going to talk about Charcot-Marie Tooth Disease, which is only known as CMT for short. Whilst the name suggests that it is a single disease, in reality, it reflects quite a large group of genetic defects, which result in a progressive peripheral neuropathy with a number of characteristic clinical expressions. Let's start with the genetics. CMT is not that rare and occurs in around one in two and a half thousand people. At present, there are at least 70 recognized errors in the genetic code of different components of peripheral nerves that can cause this. And with further research and testing, more are likely to be found. Most patients will have a family history of muscular weakness, but in a small percentage, it may be a non-inherited spontaneous error when the DNA was being formed. And this is called sporadic rather than familial. Our genetic DNA code is spread across 46 chromosomes, which are formed into 23 pairs. Each pair of chromosomes contains similar information, with one chromosome in the pair coming from our mother and the other one from our father. 22 of these pairs encode the standard components of the body and are called autosomes. The 23rd pair are known as the sex chromosomes or allosomes, which determine our gender. Some genetic errors require faults in both copies of a chromosome to express themselves as a disease. These are called recessive conditions, but some genetic errors can express themselves even with only one chromosome containing a fault, and this is known as a dominant genetic condition. By looking at the characteristic patterns of family disease inheritance, a specialist will try and determine whether the genetics are autosomal dominant, autosomal recessive, or X-linked when related to the 23rd pair. The reason why this is important in CMT is to both work out which candidate genes should be tested to achieve a genetic diagnosis, as well as for genetic counseling for patients and their wider families. Neurophysiology testing adds important information as to whether the primary fault is within the genes that encode for the components of the core wiring of the nerve, called the axon, or whether the primary fault is with the components of the insulating sheath around the nerve, called myelin. You can see a more detailed explanation of how nerves conduct by clicking on the eye card above. If the size of the responses are reduced with relative preservation of the speed of conduction, then this will be classed as a predominantly axonal form. If the speed of conduction is significantly slowed with relative preservation of the amplitude of the response, then this will be classed as a demyelinating form. Combinations of both can also be present, particularly later on, which can make it confusing. However, the process tends to be symmetrical and where slowed conduction is occurring fairly uniform, but with some noticeable exceptions. For diagnostic purposes, if the median nerve in the forearm, which is the nerve over here, conducts signals at less than 38 meters per second, then it is called demyelinating. And if above 45 meters per second, in the presence of reduced size of response, then it will be called axonal. Between 38 and 45 meters per second, it will be classed as intermediate. In this example of a demyelinating CMT, the speed of conduction is remarkably slowed to just 10 meters per second. Normally, this particular nerve segment would be conducting at between 50 to 60 meters per second, and so 10 meters per second is significantly reduced. Combining the information between the clinical presentation, family history, and neurophysiology results assists in choosing which genes to test, and so reduces delays in final genetic diagnosis and the cost of testing. Let's now discuss the different types of CMT. But before I do so, I just want to explain something which is a little confusing about all the different names and classifications. CMT is a hereditary motor and sensory neuropathy or HMSN for short. While CMT was the original name, with time, different forms of CMT were identified and named such as CMT1, CMT2, CMT4, and CMTX. But there are other HMSNs which do not commonly include CMT in their titles such as HMSN 3, 5, 6, and 7. CMT1 is a demyelinating autosomal dominant form and is by far the most common at around 60% except in Japan. There are lots of subtypes of this, but the commonest is CMT1A. Here there is a duplication error in chromosome 17 of a gene which encodes a protein called PMP22, which forms the myelin sheath. Instead of two copies, there are three copies of this gene and this leads to a dysfunction of the myelin for reasons as yet not fully understood. It tends to have symptom onset in the teenage years. It's very slowly progressive, but is associated with a normal lifespan. 
Another relatively common type of CMT is CMT1B, where the error is in the gene encoding MPZ and tends to present earlier and tends to be more disabling. Confusingly, some MPZ mutations can be milder with a later onset and lead to an exonal form under the CMT2 category. CMT2 is an exonal form which tends to present in teenage years and is usually autosomal dominant but rarely can also be autosomal recessive. The extent of disability is very variable depending on the encoding genes. HMSN3 is an infantile form called Dejerine Sota syndrome and is now defined as presenting with an age of onset less than three years of age with a severe neuropathy and skeletal defects. It was originally identified as an autosomal recessive form but is now also recognized to occur in an autosomal dominant form with mutations that can affect PMP22 and MPZ. CMT type 4 forms are all very rare and are all inherited in an autosomal recessive manner. These tend to be more severe and may be associated with specific features such as cataracts and deafness. HMSN5 is an autosomal dominant form with pyramidal tract features which lead to marked stiffness and paraplegia. HMSN6 is an exonal form with optic atrophy and HMSN7 is associated with later onset and retinitis pigmentosa. CMT X-linked affects the gene for connexin 32 and is often a combination of exonal and demyelinating features and occurs on the 23rd pair. In men who have one X chromosome and one Y chromosome, it usually is much more severe than when it occurs in women who have two copies of the X chromosome and so because they retain one healthy copy, have less impairment. There are also intermediate forms which may be autosomal dominant or autosomal recessive. Symptoms tend to be length dependent, and this means that the smaller sized nerves, which are most susceptible to degeneration and damage, will be affected first. Hence the legs tend to be affected way before the hands. Foot deformities are common, such as claw toes and high arches. This is because muscles require healthy nerves to interact with them. As the nerves deteriorate, the muscles also deteriorate as a secondary phenomena. When they shrink, Weakness develops, and this may be followed by foot drop as it slowly ascends. The hands, when affected, may lose muscle bulk and become progressively weak, but this tends to start much later on in the 30s and 40s, depending on the exact genetic issue. Loss of sensation will occur in the same pattern as the weakness. As I alluded to above, some CMTs have very specific clinical features which can help pinpoint the genetic mutations such as deafness or visual disturbances. Because the underlying problem is one that is hardwired into the genes, there isn't as yet a direct cure that can either stop or reverse these conditions. However, there are quite a number of medications that can actually worsen this condition and so should be avoided. I append links below to the CMT associations in the UK and USA which list these information in the box below. If you aren't already aware, their websites contain a wealth of information and you can also watch a fantastic overview video from Professor Mary Riley, a leading and pioneering expert in this field by following the link below. Treatment is therefore mainly supportive and should be led by an expert in managing these conditions. A multidisciplinary team should be involved to coordinate medical, physiotherapy, occupational therapy, orthotics, pain control, psychological and social support as required. Sometimes orthopedic surgeons may also need to assist with managing foot deformities and hip dysplasia. Thank you for watching and I hope that you have found this video helpful. If you have, please do support this channel by clicking on the thumbs up and subscribing. It is very much appreciated.